Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our normal Monday morning assembly. This morning, we are thinking about our value of the month, which is care. Now, think about our assembly last week, where we, I challenge you to be caring towards someone, or more importantly, to start feeling care from someone else. Was someone kind to you? Did someone care for you? And how about you? Did you show care to someone? Were you caring or kind towards someone who needed you? I hope so. Because every day it's great at school to see examples of kindness and care shown in the classroom, in the playground, in the staff room, in the office, wherever I go, there's always someone caring for someone else. And that is what I think makes Broughton so special. Now, I wonder if at home you show care for things as much as you do at school. Perhaps you show care for your brother or sister, your, your parents or whoever looks after you at home. I wonder if you show care for your bedroom. I wonder if your bedroom is really tidy. Do you show care for that? Do you show care when you finish dinner and you load the dishwasher? Hmm, I wonder if that's the same for everyone. I wonder if you show care when whoever looks after you at home says, if you tidy your room, then you can get something. Then I will take you somewhere. So showing care when there's a reward at the end. I wonder. I want to show you this um, PowerPoint this morning. And this here is a picture of two animals called an egret and a water buffalo. Now, they are very special animals because they care for each other. Well, the egret cares for the water buffalo in a very special way. Let me just move this over here. Okay, so this bird here is called the egret. And out in, uh, out, out, out in the plains where this water buffalo lives, often there's flies, there's little gnats, there's little irritating things flying all around and landing in this fur. And you know when you've got a, an itch on your back and you just qu can't quite reach it, how irritating it is. Well, the water buffalo gets that all the time with these irritating flies and gnats that land on its back and its fur. And do you know what the egret does? The egret stands there and will pick out the little flies and the little gnats and the little nits to make the water buffalo more comfortable. The egret is kind of like its fur cleaner. The egret um, benefits because that can munch on the, the little fleas and the little flies because that's the type of thing that it, it eats. So the egret, by caring for the water buffalo, actually gets to help himself. Now, I didn't actually believe that this happened until I was doing some research at the weekend. This is called a plover bird. And I'm sure you all know what this is. This is a crocodile. Look at the size of those teeth. Now, normally, any, if anything lands inside a crocodile's mouth, that's the last you see of it. It is munched for breakfast. But when a plover bird lands in a crocodile's mouth, the crocodile doesn't eat it. And the reason why is that the plover bird, you can't really see here, has a very, very special beak. And what that plover bird does is that it picks out tiny little bits of meat and leaves and anything that's on the crocodile's teeth. Now, the crocodile doesn't have a toothbrush, as you can imagine. So it needs something to keep its teeth clean. And that is what the plover bird does. So in effect, the plover bird is the crocodile's dentist. And you know when you go to the dentist and the dentist says open wide, that is exactly what the crocodile is doing. So the, the plover bird looks after the crocodile. It cares for the crocodile by taking care of its teeth. Now, the next one, again, I didn't really know until I found this out at the weekend. This is a honey badger. And a honey badger absolutely loves honey. You know how much Winnie the Pooh loves honey? 
Well, a honey badger loves honey even more. Now, this here is called a honey guide bird. And this honey guide bird, its nose is so sensitive it can smell honey a mile off. Honey is its favourite, favourite, favourite thing. However, you will see that its beak is very, very small. So it often can't get in to the nests where the honey is kept. So, what honey badgers have learned is if they follow honey guide bears, that will take the honey badger to where the honey is. The honey badger can then climb a tree and use its claws to scoop out all of the honey from the nest. And guess what then happens? The honey guide bird can then get into the tree and scoop out any of that any honey that's left. So the honey guide bird cares for the badger by taking it to the to where the honey is. And without knowing it, the honey badger actually cares for the honey guide bird because it leaves a big hole where the honey guide bird can go in and then um, take some of honey for itself. Now these two, you would never put them together, would you? Except that if you went into the countries where they live, you would often see them um, together. And the reason why is, is both of these obviously get munched by lions or tigers or other big animals. So they, they need to stay away from um, lions and tigers. And if they, if, they, if they come near, the ostrich and the zebra need to get out of there very quickly. Now, the zebra has amazing eyesight, but absolutely terrible hearing. So it can see a lion a mile off, but it can't hear it if it was sneaking up behind him. The ostrich doesn't have good eyesight, but it has amazing hearing. So if there is a lion or, or, or tiger sneaking up behind them, the ostrich will be able to hear. So the ostrich cares for the zebra and the zebra cares for the ostrich by using their own particular senses to help each other and care for each other by making sure they each know, hey, there's a lion coming, quick, let's get out of here. Now, you may have heard the story of a lion and the mouse. If you haven't, it's an Aesop's fable and here's a little poem to um, summarise it. One day when Lion was resting, a mouse came running past. Lion quickly grabbed him in his paws. He held him fast. Got you, little mouse, said Lion. I'll make a meal of you. Not much of one, I must admit, but then you'll have to do. Please set me free, I beg of you, said Mouse. One day you may need me. You won't be sorry if you do. Just you wait and see. Me need you, growled Lion. You're far too small. Still I will set you free, though how a little thing like you could help, I truly cannot see. Soon Lion was trapped in a hunter's net. He roared aloud, began to fret. The little mouse could hear the sound, jumped on the net in leaps and bounds. With teeth so sharp, he gnawed right through, helping Lion as he said he'd do. Thank you, mouse, said Lion, you kept your word, and now I too am free. Indeed, you kept your promise and helped to rescue me. I must admit that I was wrong and that the weak can help the strong. So one good turn deserved another when kindness was shown one to the other. So the lion was just about to eat the mouse when the mouse said, No, 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 don't eat me because you're going to need me one day. And the lion couldn't understand how someone like a mouse could help ever help him. And then we see up here that a hunter had been caught. So the hunter had caught the lion in his net. The, hunt, the, the lion's life was at risk. But the mouse then risked his own life in order to gnaw through the net and release the lion. At any point, the hunter could have returned and could have killed both the mouse and the lion. So actually the mouse put his life on the line. He risked his life to care for the lion. And actually some of those other animals that we saw in the pictures risked their lives to care for the other animals. 
So I don't really expect you at school to risk your life to care for your friend. I don't really expect you at home to risk your life to to put yourself in a position where uh, you might get really, really hurt or even die in order to help someone. That would be crazy, wouldn't it? Except that's what happened and keeps happening all throughout time. And that's why today and last week and this week, you will see lots and lots of people wearing poppies. And poppies commemorate, that means they help us to think about people who have cared for us by um, serving in the army or the air force or the navy. And sometimes have had to go to war and risk their lives to care for us. I actually can't believe that people would be so brave. But throughout time, there are many, many examples of people who have done exactly that. They've shown that they care for our country, they care for what we stand for, and they care for our values by fighting against a people who don't. People and people who go to war in order to protect our country and protect the way we live. So I'm sure you would have seen lots of people wearing poppies over the last few weeks and people on television. And that's why we do wear poppies, because many, many times people have risked their lives in order to care for us and to care for our country. So I just want you to have a little think about how incredibly brave those people were. Everywhere this week and on November the 11th, which is actually Remembrance Day, you will see lots and lots of poppies. Because many, many years ago, when there was a dreadful, dreadful battle in a field in northern France, after the battle had finished and sadly thousands and thousands and thousands of people had died, the next year poppies started to grow in that field. That's why we wear poppies as a sign of remembrance. So this week, particularly on November the 11th, which is Remembrance Day, have a think about how you could care for those around you. Have a good day, everyone.